Hello and welcome to this video which today is all about setting up a server to serve my retro machines in my retro room. So this thing I want to sit permanently under the desk and to dish out drivers and images to all of my other machines via a network switch as and when I need them. I've had this case for a while, it was pretty beat up when I got it and I did get it up and running in another video with just some random parts that I had lying around but in this video we're going to try and restore it as much as possible back to the way it would have been in its original state and then get it up and running as a proper server. The project's probably going to run over two videos. This one's really about getting the components in and getting it in a state where it's got an operating system and the things that we need to get it up and running. And then there'll be another video where we actually set up the little network in the gaming room and get some images and stuff on so that we can dish them out. The case is from one of the last genuine IBM series of servers. It's a low-end machine, part of the X-Series E servers. I think there was a range before this, and this model is the 206M Model 8482. These were manufactured between 2000 and 2004 when Lenovo took over IBM's personal computer division, but Lenovo did continue to produce them under the moniker System X. So after a, a while of like hanging around on eBay and various other sites looking for bits and pieces, I managed to get some of the original parts, most notably the power supply, which is not a standard ATX supply. I put an ATX one in the machine as it stands at the minute, but it doesn't quite fit right. I've also got the original motherboard, which is kind of the main thing, being the heart of the system. Um, I got some quick release drive bay covers with the hope this thing was uh, designed to do hot swap hard drives, there's nice little SAS SCSI drives you can get for it and a backplane for that. We'll get into that in a little bit more detail later on but yeah I'm pleased what we've got here is the heart of the machine so at the very least we can get that back to its original state. One thing I discovered on this journey was these parts are quite expensive so I guess there's some of these servers still alive out in the wild so I did have to do a bit of hanging around to get them at the price that I kind of wanted to pay for it. So the main board is from IBM itself using an Intel chipset. The model number is the M71iX and it's a socket 478 Pentium 4 motherboard using the Intel 875P chipset. It comes with onboard VGA supplied by this Radeon 7000 chip that's on the motherboard. So, you know, it's there is a bit of potential for light gaming, but no AGP port here. We're not going to use it for gaming, though, just for serving stuff. These boards did have a bit of a reputation for the capacitors spewing their electrolytic guts out over the board. But looking around, these look OK. They've all got little dots on top of them, so I guess they were inspected by the people who sold me it. And here's the motherboard markings as mentioned before it's an m71ix made in taiwan i think some of those numbers might imply that this was made in 2001 got more reasoning for thinking that which we'll get to in a little while and here is the socket it's got one of these funky clamp things that i've seen on another few ibm motherboards i think the think center one that's in it at the minute has something similar i think they were fairly standard on ibm boards back then and we've got two banks for DDR memory there. We've got an ATX power supply and we've also got an AT style power supply, which I think is just to provide extra power to the PCI bus. I'm not 100% certain about that. If everybody knows any better, please let me know in the comments. All of the connectivity for storage is down in this corner here. So we've got two SATA, we've got an RDE, we've got a floppy disk connector. There's also the sort of white slot at the top of the picture there which I think is something to do with SCSI. I think there's some kind of cable or adapter goes in there. Haven't been able to find it so that's something I'll probably look for in the future. There's more connectors here. Some kind of service port connector. Don't know what that does. There's a hard drive backplane connector here so I'm not quite sure what that is. Whether it's a SATA backplane or a SCSI backplane and then we've got a sort of proprietary connector for the front panel as well. There's three PCI slots and also two PCI-X slots, which stands for PCI Extended. So these sort of massively increased the clock speed of PCI, still 3.3 volts, but went right up to 533 megahertz in its version 2. And I've always wanted to put a card of some description in this, don't know quite what, but there are a few kicking around. I'll probably get something just to try it out at some point. 
the chips. So the Intel 875P Canterwood chipset. This is the IO chip. And the other bit is underneath this rather chunky heatsink further up the motherboard. We've got a pretty sparse IO panel on this machine, just a couple of serial ports. We've got our VGA uh, parallel port, two PSUs for the mouse and keyboard, two USBs, and a network port. That's it, no sound. We don't need it on such a server like business type machine. So I did chop around for some other parts. So I've got this eServer SAS drive. This is a little 2.5 SCSI hard drive that I was hoping to use. But I can't quite figure the SCSI out on this board just yet, so that will have to go in at some other time. So enough of parts, let's whip it open, see what's inside, get what's inside out and put the new stuff in. Originally, I just bought the case for this and I had some old IBM parts kicking around. I made a video about this a while back. These were from a Think Center, I think, so we're going to get those out. We want to get the correct X-Series 206 bits and pieces in there. So the case is nice and empty now and we can go ahead and put the new PSU in. So the original PSU was an ATX that didn't quite fit properly, so it's not a standard ATX case, but we've got the correct one that came with the machine originally now and that fits nicely. The power supply is from Delta Electronics so I guess it's a decent unit but only 150 watts so not designed to run any power hungry graphics cards or anything like that. I guess just reliable and just to provide enough juice to do server type stuff which is what we wanted to do so it'll do fine for just dishing out files to the other machines in my retro builds. The insides of the machine have these kind of purple plastic bits which are kind of clamps to hold things in place. They obviously have some parts that are missing. There's this bit here, couldn't quite figure out where it went to be honest. I think it's supposed to sort of sit over the top of something, hold it in place, but I don't know what that's for so we'll just get rid of it. That empties the case and we can get the motherboard in. Okay, that's the motherboard in there nicely now and the power supply in there nicely so the machine's beginning to look as it did back in the day. The other motherboard off the Think Center had a cooler and a CPU on it. We're going to take those. I think the cooler must be very similar to the one that would have come with the X series. Uh, it's the same mount and all of that kind of thing for a Pentium 4 so this must have been either the same or similar. The process is just uh, 2.66 gigahertz Celeron Prescott Core, I think it's a 533 front side bus and you know it's nothing special. I think there's 256 kilobytes of level 2 cache on it. Not the most exciting processor in the world but it will do nicely for you know just serving up files and drivers to the other machines. No IBM memory but we'll use Kingston. PC 2100, 266 megahertz, and we'll use two gigs. So onto the hard drive, and as I said earlier, there was a few kind of issues with this. I had hoped to put hot swap hard drives in here. I did actually get one of the hot swap drives I think came with the machine, which is uh, an IBM SCSI one, but I couldn't find the back plane. So I just couldn't find a backplane that fitted this machine. I did buy one that I thought was going to fit, but it didn't. I also bought a SATA backplane and that didn't fit either. So no backplanes for this machine, unfortunately. And I also didn't have the cable that collected it to the motherboard anyway. So upgrading this thing to hot swap hard drives is something I would probably do as a little project in the future. But in the meantime, we'll have to find another solution for this build. I did actually get the cool quick release hot swap drive bay caddy things as well. Probably not going to use them this time. I just put the standard ones in because, you know, not having the correct drives seems a bit pointless to put these things in there. As we're just going to have to go with this, which is just a standard SATA hard drive. So a bit of a shame, but something to do in the future. Everything's kind of hooked up. So before we close the box up, boot it up it posts which is cool and then we can just drop into the BIOS and set a few things up 
I'll put a new battery on the motherboard so we can come in and set the date and time and all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of surface centric settings in this BIOS, which you won't go into right now. There'll be a follow up video where we configure the thing as a server and hook it up into a little network and start feeding stuff out to other machines. But in this one, we're just going to get the hardware set up. Now I did come close to setting this box up as a Linux machine, which would have been fun. I've got a nice box version of SUSE Linux, but unfortunately it's a bit earlier than this machine, which probably means there won't be driver support, which was a bit flaky back in the day. As far as Linux goes, now this machine would have come with Windows 2000 installed as standard, so I decided that's the way I'm going to go for this build. And it was quite a weird experience going through all of this stuff again because I think the last time I used Windows 2000 would have been at work years and years and years ago when sort of customers were still using it and stuff like that. So it was kind of a weird feeling to see it all again. We've got our server configuration. I'm not going to bother with that right now. And we'll do another video when we actually configure the server. So got this installed on the machine and all I really want to do now is put it back together and get a few of the basics sorted out drivers and stuff like that there were some drivers kicking around online for specifically for the e-server 206 so i got some of those we got the radeon 7000m chip driver we got the ethernet driver there was a whole bunch of others for ver different variations of this particular machine uh, couldn't find the raid drivers for this so there were still a few things in the device manager that weren't configured correctly I'll try and track those down because I would quite like to do a raid one on this machine since I'm storing all my drivers and images on it so that I get a, a mirrored backup of everything maybe onto an SSD or something like that I'm not sure if you can combine SSDs and normal drives in a raid but we'll figure out a way of doing something so I always have a backup Everything was working fine, so it's just a case of wrapping up the components and closing the box. I, d I did, didn't think ahead of time that now using a full-size SATA hard drive with all of the other things in place, this case wasn't really designed to make that easy. It was a bit of a tight squeeze, but we got there in the end. That's it. Everything back. So it's kind of almost back to the way it should have been back in the day. A more or less restored IBM X-Series eServer 206. Just the kind of hot swap hard drive stuff that will probably revisit this machine at some point if I manage to get the components. So I'm pleased to have this. You know, one of the last IBM personal servers from 2001. End of an era. On the bottom of the case, there's a sticker with a bit of information about where this thing was made here in the UK in Portsmouth of all places. So the copyright was 1981 to 2001, which I guess was the current date at the time of manufacture, which is another clue that this thing might be made in 2001. Up to this point, I've also been using a Sony mouse and keyboard but we don't want to do that because it's an IBM and I've got a nice black IBM keyboard and an IBM mouse not exactly prestige models these are not model M's just a, a rubber dome keyboard and a mouse that I got to go with my net vista but they will go nicely with this machine so there it goes I'm lucky enough to also have an IBM CRT which I guess is a fairly late one that I just picked up in a job lot of random stuff and together with the keyboard, the mouse, and now the newly restored XServer 206. That's a rather nice little setup for a server. So yeah, I'm pleased to have this. It looks pretty funky altogether. That's pretty much it for this video. It's built the server. It's not terribly exciting. No exciting sound cards or graphics cards or gameplay in this video. Just the building of uh, hopefully a reliable machine that will support all of the other machines that I build in the future and we'll be going back into this box at some point because I need to get some kind of extra hard drive in there and set up a raid to keep a backup and probably to try and do something I'd love to get the hot swap sorted out and get the SCSI hot swap drives in there with the funky caddies so maybe that would be a project for the future as well but in the meantime that's pretty much it the last thing I'm going to do is 
install Norton Ghost on here because one of the primary purposes of this machine is going to be to dish out images to my other boxes so I don't have to spend the rest of my life installing Windows 98 and DOS as I have done up to this point. And we'll have a little network switch where this thing will sit under the desk and I can just plug the other machines in and pull stuff and push stuff across. I'll also create little packs of drivers for each machine and every graphics card that I've got all different versions and things like that so that I can try out different versions with cards and things as they come in but that's pretty much it for now I hope you enjoyed watching this video and we'll get back to some rather interesting purchases that I made this week in the next video next week so if you made it this far thanks for watching I hope you'll consider giving me a thumbs up making comments good or bad and joining me for the next video thanks for watching and I'll see you later